Hey, if you haven't heard about Anchor by Spotify, it's the easiest way to make a podcast with everything you need all in one place. Let us explain. Anchor has tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. When hosting on Anchor, you can distribute your podcast on every listening platform you can imagine. Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and way more. It's everything you need to make a podcast in one place. And best of all, Anchor is totally free. Download the Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. Thanks so much. All right, coming at you live uh, in the midst of unclogging a toilet. Just hitting you with the real news here. Fighting the good fight, unclogging the toilet. Jen, how's it going in there? I think it's going well. Unfiltered here. We'll be back in just a moment. And we're back. Mm-mm. Success in there, Jen? You can't sigh. You can't sigh like that. Success in there? Uh, yes, I unclogged a toilet. Congratulations. What? Not what? by me. Why can I not sigh? Because it just sounds like lock on a Team Carter family podcast. Welcome to Team Carter Family Adventures okay, just redo. Redo. podcast. Redo. No, we're not going to redo. This is our redo. intro. This is it. We're coming. We're, we're, no, we're, we're raw and, un- and unfiltered. Good evening. And we're back. Um, thanks for joining us. Welcome to the Team Carter Family Podcast. Podcast. So, a couple of things happening. Um, we just got back, when I say just, I mean last night, got back from our whirlwind, whirlwind? Whirlwind cross-country road trip. It was a 15-day trip to the Grand Canyon from South Carolina and back. So we made a loop. 15 days, 15 states, 5,000 miles, 6 national parks. 67 plus hours of travel time in the car. Of travel time in the car. 8, 9, 10 tanks of gas. Something like that. Mm -hmm. We're going to put together a budget for you and get to exact numbers in a a separate podcast. Yeah. We'll, We'll dig into everything and way, way more. Way more than you ever wanted to know about our road trip. Yep. So, um, welcome if you guys, if this is your first time joining us, welcome. If it is your 20 something time of watch, of listening to this, welcome back. And um, we've been talking about this for, what, six months? <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. So, for a long time. And basically, the goal was well, I'll give you a little bit of the backstory. So, David went to the Grand Canyon with his parents when he was 16. Which inspired him to go to Clemson University. To well, well, it inspired me to work in natural resources because I wanted to be a park ranger. Well, the only way I could do that without going somewhere really far away was to go to Clemson. Me going to Clemson ended up in me meeting Jen. Jen and I met. We fell in love. We did missions. We lived overseas. We have babies. And now look at us now. So... My parents' decision to take me to the Grand Canyon when I was 16 has had a huge impact on the rest of my life. Mm-hmm. And so we, we dreamed, when the kids were babies, we dreamed of taking them to the Grand Canyon. And it just sounded like such a far-fetched dream, so out of reach, like, oh, yeah, that'll happen one day. Well, the past 15 days was it. So dream come true. And you may say, how did you people ever come up with this as an idea? Why did you ever think it was a good idea? Um, Our children are eight, six, and four, by the way. Six and four. They rode in the car the entire time. They really didn't fight all that much. We just we just stopped a lot, I guess. Well, where should we go? Where should we start? Because I don't want to ramble. Let's start with the first leg of our trip. Okay. Um, I think we decided that we were going to recap um, by doing two states at a time. So you're going to have to tune in later on to hear the whole thing if you want to hear different states. So we started off in good old Rock Hill, South Carolina, and it just so happened that we had some friends that um, do Dollywood every summer. They love it, or at least they've been before. They love it. And so our friends encouraged us to go to Dollywood because we've never been there, and I was really impressed. Uh, my parents claimed they took me when I was like three or four years old, but I have no recollection of Dollywood whatsoever. So we're like, sure, let's go to Dollywood. 
Um, so we left from Raquel and drove about the four, the four hours to Pigeon Forge, Tennessee, and met up with our friends at Jellystone, Yogi Bear's Jellystone Park, which is a Yogi Bear themed uh, chain campground. It's just as if you're wondering, it's just as incredible as it sounds. Mm-hmm. Totally family friendly. They had. Oh my gosh, I think we went for the playground because the playground was great. They have like this giant, um, looks like a blob, but on dry land. Um, I think it was called like the the jump pad or something. And it was this big inflatable thing that you could jump around. They had everything you needed. None of us brought campers, although you could, but none of us brought campers or anything. And I think they had um, like these glamping tents you could rent out also if you didn't want to bring your own tent. But we chose to, um, the three families that went on this little ex- excursion decided to do cabins. And those were really nice. I was surprised. Um, but they had everything you needed. Um, they had like a big uh, bunk area for the kids. And so it was like a two bed, well, I don't know about the other families, but ours was a two bedroom um, with a kitchen and a living room with like TV, microwave, toaster oven, you name it. Um, they did have laundry facilities on site, but not in the cabin. Um, and that was just fine by us. So um, so, we, so we went to Tennessee, which was about four hours away from us, hung out with our friends, um, got there, just hung out, did a cookout the first night. Um, the second day, all day, was Dollywood. And how was your Dollywood experience, David? It was good. It Dolly was, uh... Parton herself is listening to this, so make it good. All right. Dolly, uh, I want to say thank you for your theme park. Uh, it was it, it was really good. I'll be honest with you. I'm not the biggest theme park person on the face of this earth. Really? Um, yeah, it's the waiting in lines. It's the expense. It's the heat. It's the whole thing. We did go at like, the hottest possible time to go. Um, but that being said, that being said, uh, they had a t- it was so kid friendly. They had this humongous section with nothing but cool kids rides. Mm-hmm. There were these bears you could ride. There was this pirate ship thing that went upside down. Um, the kids really enjoyed it. And that means that I really enjoyed it. And this was our kids. I guess we should also say that this was our kids first theme park experience and they really enjoyed it. And then the families that we went with, uh, who go to theme parks all the time, this was their however many time they've been to Dollywood and they, their kids did all the big coaster rides and they lo- also loved it. So I feel like there was a good mix of both, like big coaster rides if you're into coasters and there's also a really good section of kitty, kitty rides. I don't know. It was fun. I was surprised how big the park was, how, how many rides there were, how yes. nice the facilities were. Um, it, 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 it's not a rinky-dink little operation. We're used to Santa's land. So... If you've never been to Santa's Land, you must go. It's all the family fun you can have for twenty one ninety five per person. It's in Cherokee, North Carolina. Well, fall is best of all, y'all. Um, Cherokee, North Carolina, Santa's Land. It's, it's open from March to October this, or something. Yeah, it, I think it opens in the spring when maybe it's even open in May because all the snow has to melt first. And the same sweet people work at that park, and we see them every year. <laughs> I think... Um, think county fair from the 50s and that's and that's basically santa's land. and that's santa's land it's wonderful so check out santa's land the next time you're in the smokies is it worth it absolutely um dollywood is also worth it um although more expensive i will say that but it was really good so in total dollywood if you are thinking about it if you're on the fence about it we were there for eight hours and rode 10 rides um and that wasn't even a, a a third of the park probably no we didn't actually get to actually i overheard a woman say in line that this is their third year coming to dollywood for a weekend and she's like we still haven't experienced the entire park coming in three three visits she I mean, was like you that sounds see. a little on the slow she was side, like but... you could spend literally days there from what she said that sounds a little bit slower than normal but it, it there there was like towards the at the very end of the day we walked around. We just took a lap around the entire park. Mm-hmm. And there was a whole other day's worth of rides and stuff that we could have done. There was a there was a foam party, like a bubble party happening in one section, which we didn't bring a change of clothes for anybody, so. 
So we didn't have a change of clothes for that. But next time we'll we'll think about it. Um, they do have a t- like a time saver pass that you can get um, that you can basically like jump ahead in line. We opted not to get that, um, but it really wasn't bad. And they have you know shuttles from the parking area, and so yeah, it was fun. I go again for a whole day of Dollywood. It it was worth it. It was a lot of fun. We're not being paid by Dolly to say that, but it was a lot of fun. You should visit her park. This podcast is not sponsored by Dolly Parton Incorporated, but we were open to being possibly. Our kids do like our kids do like Dolly's music. Yes, we <laughs> well, we decided this is a family that in order to go to Dollywood, you have to know at least one Dolly song. And now they know like three or four songs. It's great. Mm-hmm. Guess which one's their favorite? Jolene. They like Jolene. And they like Coat of Many Colors. Oh, that's a good one. Those are two good ones. And Eleanor really likes 9 to 5. That's her jam. Do you think Dolly ever, like, goes to her own theme park, like, incognito? Like, dresses up to where you might not recognize her so she can experience her own park? Kind of like a, um, I don't know, customer surprise or secret shopper thing? You think she does that? I bet you she would make them shut the park down for the day so that she could ride all the rides without having to leave the line. Um, that makes sense. That's what I would do if I was her. And I think, like, one of my favorite parts of the park, although Kitty Land was pretty phenomenal because we hung out there a lot, um, I really liked, oh, I forget what it's called, but it, in one section of the park, it looks like an old Route 66 with, like, um, it looks like you're on the set of Cars or something. Oh, yeah. um, where it has, like, the old diner and the old school cars sitting around. And you're walking on this, like, you know, it looks like an interstate road you're walking around the park on. Like a 50s Main Street kind of thing. Yeah, and they've got the, the cars that you can actually ride. You know, your kid can pretend to drive. And the kids really like that. We stood in line for that. But, um, I don't know. I just liked it because we told the kids, hey, in a couple of days we're going to be on Route 66 in Arizona. Like in like in cars, the That's movie. True. So that was that was cool. So, um, that was kinda of what was going on there in Dollywood. Would we stay at Jellystone again? For families, I would say yes. But I think we were a little surprised at how high the cost was for Campground. But I feel like the draw there is that it's literally in the backyard of Dollywood. It's the next that's, door. That's the draw there. Oh, and Dollywood has a train. So that was, I think, the best part of the kids really loved the train. We rode the train at the very end. Um, Klondike Katie at the very end. And it was awesome. So, family friendly? Absolutely. Would we do it again? I don't know. Um, so that was day two. We spent the entire day at Dollywood. Um, Our friends actually lasted from when the park opened until when the park shut down at closing and did fireworks at like 9 p.m. We didn't make it that far, but we did stay eight hours. We gave it our best shot. Um, But yeah. But cool thing is that you can kind of see the fireworks. and You can definitely hear the fireworks from Jellystone Park. So that was neat. We didn't feel like we necessarily missed out on that. Day three, we hung out in the Great Smoky Mountains National Park with our friends. We went to Greenbrier Recreation Area Swimming Holes. That's a mouthful. But if you look it up on GPS, it I think it was more of a local thing because I'd never heard of it before. But um, it's near Gatlinburg, the Gatlinburg side of the park. And uh, if you look it up on GPS, it's uh, parking area number two. And so we followed that, and it was really nice. It was basically just a river, and, you know, it's the Pigeon River of the Great Smoky Mountains National Park. Uh, it's free because the Smokies are free. And you bring your own lunch, picnic lunch. You bring your own inner tubes, which we didn't know about that. So next time, we would bring our own inner tubes to go tubing down the river. And there was this neat little um, rapid section that you could go down. It was really fun, and the kids... Bring your own life jackets or floaties if you need those. And, yeah, we spent all day picnicking and swimming in the river. And, yeah, it was a lot of fun with friends. And it was something free to do. So after (laughs) spending all of our money at Dollywood the day before, it was something free to do. Just make sure you pack out all of your trash because nobody wants to find your trash when they go 
yes. there because it was very pristine and beautiful. Yeah, leave it better than you found it, please. Yeah, um, so that was in the Little Pigeon River, which is very cool. Something, and you guys probably knew this, but I just struck them while we were up there. The name of the town is Pigeon Forge. Pigeon Forge. I thought, in my mind, Forge. It's like a guy working metal, you know, had a forge. But Pigeon Forge is not Forge. Well, it is Forge, but 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 not not like a metal working station. Forge is like you ford the river. Mm-hmm. Like somebody forging the Pigeon River. Yeah, that's what it is, but it's spelled weirdly. Okay. And I knew this because I was watching one of the local news channels, and it was like a little spotlight on Pigeon Forge, Tennessee Public TV. Da, da, da. And it explained that's how it got its name, because it was named after a ford in the river. So it was a lot of fun catching up with the other two families. Shout out to Team Bowman and Team Haldeman for coming with us. Um, we had a lot of fun with you guys. It was great to reconnect. Next year, we're thinking about maybe getting a cabin together, like doing a big one giant cabin with all of our families and uh, seeing some other stuff in the Smokies. But I think, I don't know, the Smokies are just always so fun and there's always a lot to do there. So we'll probably do that again next year. So that was really what we experienced from Tennessee, right? That was like a very slow easing into our trip because we didn't just... The original plan was just to zoom straight to Mississippi. Um, and so we ended up going to Tennessee first, spending three wonderful days there. And then we drove from Pigeon Forge to... Starkville, Mississippi. Starkville, Mississippi, which we had never been, but we kept saying, I think we're going to like Starkville. And turns out we did. Starkville is a very, very cool town. It is the home of Mississippi State University. Bulldogs, go Bulldogs. And... Is a small, not that different than Clemson, a small college town centered around the university. Mm-hmm. Not much else going on anywhere else around. So the community, you could just feel like the tight knit community around the college. Yeah. Very cool. Mm-hmm. Uh, lots of. Uh, Mississippi State just won a national baseball championship. Just, just won a national championship in baseball I uh, last year, so there's lots of fanfare about that. Lots of new buildings, new construction going on. It just seemed like a really, it seemed like a place with a lot of life. And I don't know if you if you ever driven through Mississippi before, but there's not a lot of places in Mississippi that you could describe in that way that you would describe with the words a place with a lot of life. Just be hundred percent honest with you. We've been to Oxford and now and have been to Starkville, and both are really cool towns. And Oxford had that feel too of yeah. like, uh, you know, everybody probably either goes to college here or works for the college or you know it's centered around the college which is neat something that surprised me was um and maybe I, I, I don't know maybe all SC schools are like this I have no idea but um Mississippi State uh the university you know Ole Miss um oh we went through the University of Alabama just because we needed a stopping point for lunch and so Tuscaloosa was on the way, and so as we're passing through Tuscaloosa, we were like, let's just do a lap around the University of Alabama. Um, that YouTube video is also posted today. If you get a chance yep. to check on our YouTube channel. Team um, Car Family Adventures. Just go to, go to the YouTube Google machine and type in Team Car Family Adventures, and you'll find us. On YouTube, yep, University of Alabama, and also all the things that we mentioned about Tennessee, Dollywood, and the Greenbrier Recreation Area, those videos are also already posted. Everything we're going to talk about is going to be a video that you can go reference. Right. right. You can pull it up at the same time while you're while you're listening to this. You can watch and listen at the exact same time to reference. Double Team Carter. Mm-hmm. That's that's amazing. Um, yeah, so we as we're going through the University of Alabama, I think I was just floored at like one, and I'd say this is true of uh, University of Missouri as well, um, SEC, school, SEC schools are, one, huge, and two, they have so much land, they just, like, sprawl out. Have you noticed yeah. that? Like, they have huge buildings on campus, and not only are the buildings huge, it's like they have so much space, they just, there's, like, at least an acre or two in between buildings. It, I was impressed. It certainly seems like that. And everything was extremely pristine and clean and, like, well manicured and... I don't know. So I was impressed. Good job, SEC schools, because 
So of of the two towns, Oxford and Mississippi State, you got to pick one because those are rivals. It's Ole Miss, Mississippi State. Oh lord. Which town do you prefer? Clemson. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, me too. Me, me personally, Oxford was cool, but Mississippi State reminded me of Clemson, so I, I think I prefer Mississippi State. Just me personally, just based on the town. Mm-hmm. Just based on the town. Now, given both times that we have driven through these university schools, it's been summer. Yeah. There hasn't been a lot of university activity on campus whatsoever because, you know, both times we've either walked through or driven through campus, it's like, where are all the people? Yeah. Um, they're not there yet. Maybe they're doing RA training. I, I don't know. But Mississippi State looked like the facilities team. Sorry, no. Ole Miss looked like the facilities team had taken half the summer off. That was when we went, which was in July. Yeah. In July? In July. So, I mean, maybe it would be a totally different story and experience if we were to go back, say, during football season and then compare both schools. I feel like probably I would need a fair comparison. Probably. So, we'll just have to take a road trip during football season. Just make a, just make a tour of all the South. That would be such an amazing road trip to go to a bunch of different SEC schools during football season. Just going from, from Ole Miss to Mississippi State to Alabama to Auburn. To Arkansas. So at some point... That would be so cool. At some point, Team Carter family is going to just turn into like the ESPN bus, and we're just going to go around to literally every college during football season. That does something. I mean, come on. Gentlemen that are listening to this, you know that would be cool. <laughs> go to LSU, Baton Rouge, then then go to Tallahassee. That sounds amazing. Then go up to Athens. Like, I mean, come on. David's cool recruiting. If any, if any guys out there that love football want to join David in this expedition, y'all get y'all get together, start talking. And... Yeah. So, so we were one of the things that we noticed about Mississippi is, and this is true of a lot of different places that we noticed, and then, uh, not just Mississippi, just how few people are actually there. It's a in land area. It's a good sized state, but the population is like. This population is. Let's see. I'll look this up. And it took us, I think, seven hours thereabouts to go from Pigeon Forge to Starkville. So, yeah. Let's see. Population of 3 million. While he's looking that up, everyone we met in Mississippi was extremely nice. Like, they were just really happy to have us. Um, Great customer service at the hotel we stayed at. And, yeah, I mean, it, it was just, you know, small hometown southern feel to it like it was really nice we, we would go back is what we're saying um and oh on the way there this is this is fun um the Natchez Trace Parkway which is run by the National Park System um is in Mississippi and so at some point right that was coming into Mississippi we got on the, we got on that and it's a 444-mile scenic parkway. Uh, we compared it to the Blue Ridge Parkway in the Smokies because that's what we know. But, yeah, it's a, it's a over 400-mile scenic parkway that connects, oh, my gosh, I think it connects Tennessee, Alabama, and Mississippi. And it, it spans back through history, through, um, oh, I don't know. It used to be used by the, I think, Native Americans, right? As like a trading route or like, it was like the old road, quote unquote, um, that was a link between those areas, so. I was looking up all these facts about Mississippi. Um, It's also, I found this out, it's also one of America's 11 scenic, there's 11 scenic trails in the United States for hiking, and so the Natchez Trace is one of those Mm -hmm. trails that you could hike. Um... Did we hike it this time? No, but it's basically beautiful woods, lakes, gorgeous, rolling, rolling hills. I mean, it's not, I wouldn't say there's a lot of elevation there because it's Mississippi, no, not, but it's, yeah. 
is really pretty. So if you ever get a chance to drive the Natchez Chase Parkway, we drove 40 miles of it into, um, I forget where we got on on the interstate, but then we, coming into Jackson, Mississippi, we took that parkway for 40 miles and it was beautiful. It was gorgeous. Yeah. And then we got off and we rode around Jackson, Mississippi. Never been to Jackson before, so you know we had to sing the song by Johnny Cash and and do the Jackson thing. And we rode around, um, saw the state capitol building. Jackson, Mississippi, is very reminiscent of Columbia, South Carolina. Yeah, it was. It was like welcome to Jackson. Very reminiscent of Columbia. Mm hmm. So yep, we did that. It has a beautiful state capitol building. Um, has a bunch of cool murals going up. Um, I'm sure. Did we go on a Sunday? Or was it just really early in the morning? I feel like not a whole lot of things were open, but yet also at the same time, we didn't have a whole lot of time to get out of the car and walk around. We just drove around it. So, yeah. Drove around it, did a quick sightseeing tour by ourselves, and um, yeah, kept going to Starkville. So. And Starkville had a lot of cool murals too, and is, cute little mom and pop shops. Is Jim Henson from Mississippi? Is he really? I looked up famous people from Mississippi. We got Selma Ward. Sorry, I don't know who that who it is, but if I should, I'm sorry. B.B. King. I know B.B. Tammy Wynette, country singer. Jerry Rice, football player. NFL player played for the 49ers forever. Elvis Presley, of course. The big, the big kahuna himself. Jim Henson. Charles and Medgar Evans. They are um, a civil rights activist. Oprah Winfrey. Oprah's from Mississippi? Mm-hmm. I didn't know that. The top 13 attractions in Mississippi, the Grammy Museum, Mississippi, Elvis Presley Birthplace, Windsor Ruins, Mississippi Children's Museum, Roanoke, Tupelo Buffalo Park and Zoo, Geyser Falls Water Theme Park, Mississippi State Fair, and Amusement Park. Park. Mississippi State Fair? There's a fair there? Mm-hmm. Oh, that's cool. When does that happen? In the fall? Probably fall. Okay, we're going to have to come back in the fall, obviously. Mississippi is the poorest state in the Union currently. With 18.8% of its residents living in poverty, they have a high, they have the high, the highest child poverty rate. Um, I'm just going through some of the facts here. To get a little tiny bit of snow, cost of living is really cheap there. Homes are really cheap. Let's see. In every town we went to, by the way, we were looking up houses just for funsies. Like, how much does the house cost in yeah. Starkville? How much does the house cost in Tuscaloosa? Like, it was fun. Um, but yeah, so. And then um, one of our friends in Rock Hill, we come, come to find out their dad's from Starkville and still yeah. lives there. So, that's cool. So Mississippi, and then right behind Mississippi for the poorest state, or right above Mississippi, I guess, is New Mexico. New Mexico, really? Because mm-hmm. we also really liked New Mexico. So yeah. But you'll have to tune into another podcast um, to get all the information about New Mexico. So tonight we did Tennessee and Mississippi, and so uh, after we drove around Mississippi State University and. Um, made dinner and spent the night in our hotel and I will say that so basically on a road trip we took our trusty Honda Odyssey and um, by a miracle I mean that thing took us all the way around the country and back no problems didn't even have a flat tire praise God didn't have engine trouble didn't have and we do take really good care of our car Um, and we made sure that we checked everything before we left but you never know um, yeah, we didn't have any problems. And so we were hotel hopping, so to speak, around the country. And we kind of split that up between Airbnbs and hotels. This is not an ad for Airbnb. Jimmy Buffett's from Mississippi. What? I could believe that, though. Is he from, like, Biloxi or something? He's I could from believe that. Pascagoula. Where is that? Probably on the coast. So, if you're from Mississippi, um, or you're from Tennessee, or even Alabama, we'll throw Alabama in there, too, because we did pass through Alabama. Um, If you are from there, what's something that you like about your hometown where you live? Um, Or where you live currently, it might not be your hometown. Um, 
but yeah, everybody was very nice. Um, surprise, surprise, <laughs> in all of those states. Between t- 2010 and 2020, between the 2010 and 2020 census, Mississippi lost 0.2% of its population. The new data shows that 64 of Mississippi's 82 counties saw a decrease in population during that time, while only 18 counties recorded increases. This is from an article from oldmiss.edu. Hmm. This is interesting. Can we get some good news on Mississippi? I mean... Yeah, I, I'm just... It's just interesting. We really liked it. I'm just... I'm just... Re- I'm hitting you with the facts here. It just reminded... Starkville in particular reminded us of Clemson, and we were like, okay... We could see ourselves. We could see ourselves here too. Like as much as we love our alma mater, like okay, I see you, Starkville. You're pretty cool too. Um, <clears throat> the state's small towns lost population, while larger, more populated areas such as the Jackson Metro area, the Gulf Coast, and DeSoto County saw growth in the latest census. So th- this is some of your migration as well, people moving between places in the state. Okay. Um, Hines County. Lost 17,000. That's a big decrease. The largest county, DeSoto County, that's on the coast. Do, where is, what county is Mississippi State in? Is it in Hines County? Because that sounds familiar. Start right on here. Let me do this. And it was interesting because the last. Okatiba. Okatiba, right. The last time that we went last summer we took a road trip to arkansas and on the way back from arkansas we rode through the mississippi delta and that was totally different because i think i drove for 45 minutes and the scenery literally did not change for 45 minutes it was the same beautiful green soybean fields and i felt like i was in some time warp or something like why isn't anything moving yeah um so the median home in Mississippi is $141,000, sorry, $142,000, which is quite cheap. <clears throat> That's how much a house is? It's 55% of the national average, by the way. Healthcare is right at, it's 101% of the national average. Groceries are 95% of the national average in Mississippi. But the, the cost of housing being so much less, 55.6%. Wow, that's wild. That is wild. Is Vicksburg in Mississippi as well? Yeah, Vicksburg. Okay, so after we went to Starkville, I guess we can address Vicksburg because it's still in the state. Um, Because I guess we're doing these reviews by state. Um, Yeah, Vicksburg was really cool. I, a lot of um, Civil War history there. So so Vicksburg is the site. Now, neither one of us are historians, but I'll just give you the... The brief overview here. You can Google it since we're missing probably a ton if you don't know, of information. If you're not familiar with it, it's, 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 it's pretty fascinating. Vicksburg was the site of a crucial battle during the Civil War. Um, there was What the Union ended up having to do was destroy the South's ability to make war. Until they did that, the fighting was not going to stop. So the way that they did that was taking over the port city, specifically on, on the Mississippi River. So General Grant, the same General Grant who ended up being president, uh, General Grant was tasked with with taking down the city of Vicksburg, and it turned into the turned into a siege. Uh, I don't know the exact amount of time that went on, but it was not a quick it, it was not a quick battle. And it was the, like a year, right? It it was a while. An extended amount of time. The city of Vicksburg sits up on top of these bluffs that overlook the Mississippi River, which is unique because there's not a lot of elevation change in that region anyway, right? Hardly at all. So the fact that that the city sits up on these bluffs is pretty cool. Well, the Union gunboats. Um, couldn't there was no way to attack the fort that was on top of the bluff because it was out of you know they had the high ground basically so they came up with this really innovative strategy on how to on how to actually get troops across and you should look it up i won't spoil it for you it's very cool um but there's a there's a national monument there's a national battlefield monument there that explains everything that happened uh, there's a really cool downtown almost new orleans-esque mm-hmm. style mm-hmm. Of, you know french quarter kind of a downtown um, which makes sense because it's around the river. It's not that far up the river from New Orleans. So it would make sense why why it looks like that. And it's, it seemed like there were a lot of people out and about. Probably because, to my knowledge, Vicksburg... I don't think Vicksburg's, Vicksburg is like a college town, right? I don't think so. I don't think so. But there were like a lot more people out and about. As not like Starkville and Oxford, at least. 
Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, very cool town. Um, definitely river town. The whole town slopes down to the Mississippi River. Mm-hmm. There's the, little murals the, on the levee yeah, wall. Yeah, big giant levees and locks. It's just really cool mm-hmm. to check out. Um, and we literally just had time to cruise on through. We didn't yeah. even stop. Yeah. Um, just kind of rode through it for a second and then kept on going. A lot of green space, also very beautiful. I'm sure the people were nice there as well. Yeah, everyone we ran to in Mississippi was really nice. And me reading these facts is not me talking junk about it. I'm just trying to give you the blow by blow. Uh, Mississippi reminded us of like a South Carolina, of like a rougher <laughs> sl- South Carolina, just ever so slightly rougher South Carolina. Um, between the condition of the roads, between you know, the, the vast stretches of of, of woods and, and fields and that kind of thing. We kept saying when we were in Alabama and Mississippi at different points, we would say we could be in like Columbia, South Carolina. We could be in Spartanburg, South Carolina. We could be in that area between (laughs) uh, Columbia and Charleston where there's, you know, woods and farms like this. That's what it felt like to us. So I don't know. Mississippi. Good. Well done. Thank you for hosting us. Um, Tennessee. Thank you for being just a fun mountain playground, as always. Here we go. Thank you, Tennessee. Here we go. Oh, okay. The city of Natchez in Mississippi, a beautiful, historic southern city, will pay you $6,000 to pick up and move there for a year. The city of Natchez is calling on remote workers across the country to relocate to their charming and historic community for one year through a program called Shift South. If someone is interested in that, how can they find out more? How can they find out more? Uh, go to... We're not sponsored by these people. He literally just, just Google, looked this up. Google Mississippi will pay you to move there. Google that. Wow. Uh, losing population is a big deal for a number of reasons. Tax base being the big one because less people you have, less less people there are to collect taxes off of to provide services, schools, roads, etc. Firefighting, you know, police, law enforcement, all that stuff. Trash pickup. Yeah. You know, if the trash pickup goes down, you know, we are all in trouble. We are all in trouble. The, the other part of it is, as you lose population, um, you also start to lose the number of the number of representatives in the in the House of Representatives. The number of Congress people, congressmen and women that, that a state has, is dependent on the population of that state. So, as your popu- so at a, at a, in an already small state like Mississippi that has, I would say, less than five congressional representatives, losing one is a big deal. So it's just kind of interesting. It's kind of interesting. Um, you know, think of the implications of that. So there you go. Google it. I'm going to look up, pick, look up some pictures of Natchez, Mississippi. Yeah. Look it up. N-A-T-C-H-E-Z. I'll see. Mm-hmm. Let's see. Fun fact, David's parents actually went in Natchez this year and Vicksburg. They did a whole stay in Vicksburg, and they said it was lovely. Oh, um, nice. And they went probably a month or two before we did this epic road trip, and so <laughs> we definitely called them riding through Vicksburg. We were like, hey, we're at the same spot that you guys took that picture on that tractor. Hey. Yeah, Natchez is really close. It's across the river from Louisiana, which is it's like two and a half hours from New Orleans, so mm-hmm. you can imagine that that style and influence. Mm-hmm. That's very cool. Cool. That's very cool. So we didn't even go to Natchez. Not the town of it, no. Not, not the town. No. Let's That's see. really neat. I'm gonna look. I'm a homes for sale ones over. Hang on. Hang on. If you're on, if you're thinking about it, we're gonna look up a Zillow quote Did, for you. Is it? Is it just? Is it just us that does this? That checks out these cities and dreams and, about. And it looks up. I don't really want to live there. I'm just curious. Here we go. So Maybe because you're also in real estate. Maybe that's why you. Now here's a three bed, four bath, 3,500 square foot house for $240,000. Where? In Natchez. Wow. It's built in the, the, thir- the 30s or 40s. Oh, that's so cute. It's cute. It's cute. Mm-hmm. Here we go. 610 State Street. Five bed, five bath. It's like a historic home. It's a historic Maybe your finger home. Finger, I can't see. Oh yeah, like a big giant historic home with a big front porch. It's got that wood siding. That's a lot of work. Yeah, that's beautiful uh, bathroom, though. Bathroom should be 
original hardwood floors, 12 foot ceilings. Come on with it. Wow. Look at that kitchen. It's got to go with that deck needs to be replaced. The <laughs> deck needs to be replaced. Look at that library. Oh my God. It's got a Beauty and the Shut Beast up. library where it goes from the floor to the ceiling library. of books. Oh man. Oh, man. Nice house. Lots of fireplaces. Lots of, um, it overlooks. Oh, cute neighborhood. Cute little neighborhood. Interesting. I, I think that's like a, there's a second little apartment. It's been there. remodeled. Yeah. That's nice. How much for that one? 275 For how many square feet? <laughs> 30, a lot. 3,000 square feet. Wow. Abundance of cabinets. That's what the tagline is for this one. Abundance of cabinets. Oh, it's a cute house. The Mar Margaret Martin House, circa 1836. Let's see. That's really cute. The it's, thing you got to remember adorable. about these historic homes is that they probably have some sort of oh, look at that bookshelf. That's cool. Um, historic preservation laws and rules where you can only make certain updates and certain changes to the home. You can change it from the inside, but the outside has to look the same. Yeah, maybe the inside, there's only so, so much you can do, too. Mm. This one has really not been touched hardly at all. That's cute, though. It looks like a bed and breakfast. Yeah. And it's not been touched very much at all. Let's see. Adorable downtown Natchez Cottage. That's not a cottage. It's 3,000 square feet. A modest cottage. Uh, that looks like it's from the 60s. That's, that's actually pretty nice. Let's see. Let's zoom out a little bit. There's a little bit here. Let's go. There's one for 398. Where 398 get you? 300 square feet. That's 450. Okay. What can 450 get you? Ooh, look at this one. Whoa. What that's would you good. call it? Like a colonial style. Colonial style. What's a bed and breakfast on the national, on the historic national register? That's beautiful. I don't want a bed and breakfast because you think that's gotta stay a bed and breakfast. Well, somebody might want a bed and breakfast just because you don't want a bed and breakfast oh, doesn't yes. mean. Weirdos want a happy woman in the house. Brick paper patio. <laughs> 39, 325. Oh, there we go. That's cute. Okay, last one. Look up a starter home for a family. What, like, so like a like a three in one or a two in one. Like less than two fifty kind of thing. Well, I mean, I just want to know how much it is if you're like looking for a starter home and you got like you know. See less than two fifty. Although the median home price is one forty, so I should probably go uh, under two hundred. Yeah. So here's one for two hundred. Here's a three bed, two bath, brick there, ranch. There you go, brick ranch. Everybody loves a good brick ranch. It's a split level brick ranchy ranch kitchen. You know exactly been, what it looks like. You know exactly what it looks like. Kitchen. That's actually nice. It's pr it's updated. The floors. It's pretty. The kitchen's been updated. The bathrooms are original, but they're they don't look bad. It's got a split level two car garage. It's not. That's not it's, bad. It's nice for how many square feet. It's not bad. I, and, and hot dog, it's a foreclosure. Hot dog, it's a foreclosure. Um, I'm not laughing at people being a foreclosure necessarily, but... If you were do. looking to buy a starter home in the town of Natchez, maybe that's a good Although one. Although it's also Zillow, so you can't believe it any further and you can throw it. Um, one, two. Let's see. There's one by the Walmarts. Two forty nine. Okay. Now, all right. So let's say. Let's say we're talking about how much we like Starkville. Let's check it out in Starkville. Okay. Average home price in Starkville. Starkville, Mississippi. But Starkville's gonna be more. Let's see. Two forty seven. What do we got here? Three and three. Two forty six. Eight fifty. Ooh, that's rough. Haven't been touched since nineteen seventy two. That's a rough one for two two forty six eight fifty. Two sixty five. What do we got here? That's just a lot. Two eighty five. What do we got for two eighty five? Oh, two eighty five. It's a condo. Three sixty two. That's a lump of dirt. <laughs> two eighty nine. Come on, Starkville. Don't let us down. Here, here we go. Okay. Here we go. Two eighty nine. All right. Two eighty nine. What is two eighty nine? First you? picture. Now this is this is me a realtor talking junk. The very first picture is a picture of, now keep in mind, this is a college town. It is a pool table, pool table, green carpet with a Bud Light light above it <laughs> in a great room of a split level, of what looks like a split level home. There, there are several pictures of the pool table. 
There's a kitchen. This looks, oh, this is, there's several recliners and the living room. This is I shouldn't laugh. This is someone's beautiful home. I shouldn't laugh. Well, this is probably somebody's rental. It's probably somebody's rental that renting out the college students. Uh, carpet. It's got a huge room upstairs or whatever upstairs. that is. Well, let me read the description. Hang on. A three-bedroom, two-and-a-half bath home, minutes from downtown NMSU. The two living areas, a great outdoor space, fits in back your home because it does this. Yeah, that's a that's a that's a kid, you know, not kid rental, but like put a bunch of boys in it. Two forty nine on Over Street Drive. We'll see two forty nine. Oh yeah, there we go. There we go. We could yeah. Two forty nine on Over Street Drive. We could rock with that. It's got a little study area. Oh yeah, fits in the backyard. It's got new hardwood flooring, yeah. remodeled bathrooms. It's really cute. Okay. Kitchen baths. Two forty nine. If you want a beautiful starter home with a yard, in beautiful Starkville, Mississippi. Now, you have to work at the university or something, I guess. Um, it's about the only uh, places that are available, I suppose. But so, we like Mississippi. It, it reminded us of slightly more rural South Carolina, which is saying something. Although, you know, South Carolina's growing, man. Our population hit 5 million. You know, we're not little old South Carolina so much anymore. Um, I mean, there are still areas in between, you know, in between Columbia and in between in Columbia and Greenville, in between Columbia and Charleston that are pretty rural, but I feel like that won't be forever. I think it was really interesting. As we kept going west, and if you've taken a cross-country road trip, maybe you noticed this too, but if you're starting on the east coast and you're moving west, the further you get west, the more spread out things are and the less people there are. Yeah. Um, which was, I don't know, kind of amazing. Because, yeah, we came back and we were like, whoa, there's a lot of people here. Yeah. Um, but just, you know, there's a lot of people in the Smokies. I think we heard that there were 14 million people visited the Great Smoky Mountains National Park. It is the most visited national park in yeah, 14, the United States. 14 million, million people are going to visit Great Smoky Mountains National Park this year. And then they anticipate 16 million in like the next five years. So what that means, for all you math math whizzes out there. Math people. Um, 14 million people are going to visit in one year. What that means is that the population of the Great Smoky Mountains National Park at any particular point during the year is basically a million people. Now, there's more people that obviously visit in the summer, you know, spring, summer, fall than during the winter probably. But still... But it's ski like, season is pretty big too. Ski season yeah, ski season's a thing. But that's like 1.16 million people will visit the park every single month. That's so mm-hmm. many people... And you get these little towns like, you know, Maggie Valley, and you get Cherokee, and Pigeon Forge, and Sevierville, and all these, like, smaller-ish towns. And then at several points during the year, it's like, it's it explodes, which is great if you're in the hospitality or retail industry or, um, you know, you rely on tourism for your business and your income. Like, that's great. Um, so, yeah, we, we were tourists. Thank you, Tennessee. The Tennessee side of the park, we... We find ourselves more often on the North Carolina side of the park, so it was really nice to check out the Tennessee side of the park this time. Yep. So I think that is all for tonight. Thank you for listening, for joining in. Um, That is our wrap-up of Tennessee and passing through Alabama and Mississippi. And to hear the next leg of our trip, you'll have to tune in next time. So we'll see you soon. We'll see you soon. I want to say appreciate you guys listening. Appreciate everybody that followed along with us on Facebook. We did a story every single day. Um, just a quick, hey, you know, day 8, day 9, day 10. I got my days mixed up on day 9 and 10, but I went back and fixed that. Um, so I appreciate you all following along. Everybody that liked and, and shared and commented, we appreciate that. Um, thanks for listening. Uh, again, I'm always amazed that as many people listen to these things as, as you all do. Uh, we um, got some cool stuff coming up for you with some interviews with some folks as well so you guys are really going to like that and yeah that's it thanks for listening have a good night good night